Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to be talking about Bitcoin, and we're going to be looking at the HODL waves or the HODL waves, whichever you prefer. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. You can, of course, get access to charts like the one you will see in this video, as well as many more. So we are putting our on-chain analysis hat back on. If you are not familiar with what HODL waves are, they're essentially bands that reflect the percentage of supply that has been unused in a transaction for a certain period of time. For example, if we wanted to take a look at, say, the, the less than one day HODL waves, you can see that there are some trends in here but they're really hard to note. I mean, you, you can sort of see spikes in, in parabolic rallies, but it's not entirely clear. If you add on more and more of those short-term HODL waves, you can see that there really are spikes in short-term holders at peaks, right? At peaks. And so what we can do is we can sort of isolate long-term holders and short-term holders, right? So on one hand, we have the long-term holders who, you know, basically just DCA Bitcoin, don't really think much of it, and then occasionally they take profits. And usually when they're taking profits, they're selling to shorter-term investors that tend to come in and buy local tops only to then end up selling it later on when they're, when they're at a loss. So if you were to look at long-term HODL waves, which you'll notice... And we're defining it here as anyone who has held Bitcoin for at least six months. What you will notice at every local top, there is a big drop off in the long term HODL wave. As long term investors take profits and sell to people that are just coming in to try to make a quick buck, they end up losing some of their money. But without fail, every single time Bitcoin goes into these local tops, you will see the long-term HODL waves start to fall. Now, there's a couple of interesting points. In 2019, when Bitcoin went up about 300% or so, the long-term HODL wave did not really fall, right? Didn't really fall a whole lot. But... In 2021, it did, at least in the first peak. In 2017, it dropped off big time. But one of the things you'll notice, if you look closely at all these prior trends, the long-term HODL wave starts to fall when Bitcoin breaches new all-time highs. So effect effectively, what's hap you know, what happens is that people buy Bitcoin, they just DCA it, sort of with the assumption that eventually it'll make it to an all-time high. And then when it hits that high, longer-term investors that, you know, that were just sort of DCAing throughout the years, they will then take that opportunity to take profits. Now, some people will take a lot of their profits right away. Others will wait for higher and higher prices. But you'll see that pattern without fail every single time. And again, in 2019, very similar rally to what we just had, right? I mean, again look at the 2019 rally, right? I mean, it was, it was, it was over 300%, right? 350% rally. Not that different from what we just had. That was a little bit more. The main difference though, is that here we hit new highs. Maybe I can extra a line. Here we hit new highs. Here we did not. Both during quantitative tightening, both during high interest rates. One hit a new high, one did not. Go look at the HODL wave in 2019. A little bit of a drop off, right? But not a lot. Look at what's going on today. Starting to drop off a little bit, right? Again, it's not as big of a drop off as we saw over here or over here in 2017 or in 2021. But you can see that it is starting to go down. It hit a local top at around 79%. And since then, the long-term HODL wave has now dropped all the way down to about 
73, 73 73.5%. So that's a pretty big drop off, uh, at least notable, right? I mean, it is something uh, that is, is definitely observable. And it is really in line with what we have always seen happen. When Bitcoin breaks to new highs, you see that long term hodl wave starts to come down. Now, the reverse is also true, right? The short term hodl wave, guess what? It's going up. And we've tracked this for a while. I mean, we've been doing these videos on the hodl waves, I don't know, every five or six months for the last several years. And we've noted that throughout the entire bear market year, throughout the entire pre having year, there were, were not really any major spikes in this, but it is starting to spike some, right? I mean, not that long ago, the percentage was only about 21.5%, literally at the end of last year. And only a few months later, that number has gone up to 26.5%, right? So it has gone up some. So I just wanted to sort of talk about that a little bit and say, look, this is what normally happens when Bitcoin hits new highs, right? The short-term hot wave, starts to go up. Even in 2019, I mean, it went up a little bit, but ultimately the social risk went back down and 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 we sort of geared up for, you know, about a six to nine month period where the market cooled off for a while. Um, and all those short-term holders that many were speculating were gonna continue to come, retail didn't continue to come, right? In 2021, you can see they continue to come in throughout, really throughout the until May. In 2017, they came through January. So again, just something to keep in mind when you're looking at the on-chain data is that you will see when Bitcoin breaches new highs, long-term holders start to take profits. And normally when we breach new highs, it brings a surge of retail investors back to the space. And you know, sometimes so sometimes it plays out very differently than other times. But again, you know, we did a video on the social risk not that long ago, and it should be no surprise that the short-term hot wave has gone up. Look at new YouTube views, the seven-day SMA of new YouTube views, right? That's why it's gone up. That's why short-term holders, the hot waves for short-term holders are starting to go up because there have been some new market participants to the space. Now, will it be sustained? By the way, when I, when I do these videos on social risk or, or post the tweets, like everyone just assumes that it, it has to mean one thing, right? Guys, there are no guarantees with investing. There's no guarantees that we take out the 2021 highs right away. It could take a while, right? Um, there's no guarantee. So just remember that. Remember that as, as you continue to, I mean, you know, the one thing I continue to remind myself of when it comes to investing, there are no guarantees, right? You can't just look at a chart and say, well, I have to do this because it did that last time, right? It really does depend on, you know, a lot of different things, right? Clearly bringing new highs to Bitcoin has brought new retail interest. Will it be durable like 2020, late 2020 and early 2021? Probably going to be dependent on, on what the price of Bitcoin does. Right. I mean, that's probably what's going to be ultimately dependent on, you know, does it fade here? Does it rally again to the having right? What ends up happening? I think that's going to ultimately sort of show what the social risk is going to do. And, you know, going back over to, you know, to the the hodl waves or the hodl waves, whatever you want to call them. I I also like to sometimes look at at, at just a few different ones. Um, for instance, you could look at, say, like the two to three year hot waves. And again, I mean, it's been dropping really since October, right? Here, you can see that it started dropping in July of 2020. Over here, it started dropping in October, November, November of 2016. Here, it started dropping really late 2013. Look at three to six months. In this case, in this case, there hasn't been a huge increase, but we only just hit new all-time highs. Look at it for one week to one month, right? There's a little bit of a spike there from 4.3% about two weeks ago to 7.44% today. That's a pretty big move in a really short period of time.
right? Pretty big move. So I just wanted to talk about the Hottaways because we haven't really seen a lot of activity with them in a long time. But now, given the fact that we have hit new all-time highs, you can see that some of these have actually started to go back down. The long-term HODL waves are starting to go down a little bit. And the short-term HODL waves are starting to go up a little bit. Pretty much in line with what we normally see when Bitcoin breaches new all-time highs. But anyways, we're going to keep it short. I, I, I don't really want to go on too long in this video. Um, but... That's what I want to talk about. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. And again, if you like the on-chain stuff for Bitcoin, but you want to see it for other stuff, do note that we have the same stuff for a lot of different cryptocurrencies. Um, so again, a lot of different things to look at. Thank you guys for tuning in. Subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.